Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. Get the mic on there, All right? All of today's guests are brought to you by the Vancouver Giants, and that includes Ray Ferraro standing by this Sunday, annual Giants trick or sweet game, 4 p.m. puck drop against Kamloops. Young Giants are encouraged to dress up to celebrate Halloween early or trick or treat during the intermissions on the suite level. Following the game, it's also the first family skate, or as Ryan has written here, Gamley. Head to VancouverGiants.com for full details. <laughs> and Unreal. Grab your tickets for every uh, game. Joining us now, BC Sports Hall of Famer, mm. Canucks analyst on Sportsnet, NHL on ESPN, Ray Farrell. Ray, thanks for doing this, sir. How are you? Good. I, you know how you guys fight through this every day. I mean, <laughs> you got to be sharp. You don't. You know, your print is not. Your copy is not accurate. It's. <laughs> You know, like, yeah, I guess it's all just part of the gig, right? Like, it, way to fight through. Well, yeah, we, we pretty much deal with it every day. So, you know what we're talking about yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Hey, by the way, how about 4 p.m. start? Mm. Kids go there, dress up, and get the trick or treat. Yeah. Can you imagine the rush of sugar high on the drive home? Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> My God. Yes. I remember those days. The kids yeah. are up there, like, oh. bouncing off the walls, and they're like, we have one more piece. No, you can't have one more. And then you'd go, and at least in our house, there'd be like three wrappers under the bed. Yeah. And you'd be like, yeah, yeah. well done, kids. Well done. Yeah. In my case, it was under my bed. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dad had more than the kids. Hey, uh, Ray, are you okay? You know where we're going here. Are you okay with the, the JT Miller, Elias Pedersen scuffle at practice? And we've talked about this before in the past when it happened, hmm. the scuffle at practice yesterday. Yeah. A hundred percent. You know, like I'm just watching an interview with John Tortorella. He got into it with Nick Sealer on the bench the other day, uh, yesterday, uh, Brad Marchand and Jim Montgomery. Uh, they got into it on the bench in Boston. And then Montgomery, like Montgomery went down and gave Marchand an earful as he's walking away. You know, I've been on that bench before and, <laughs> you know, Montgomery turns around. I mean, pretty clearly Marchand said something and he went back and kind of whacked him on the shoulder pads. Miller and, Patterson get into this thing like it's not the same as a it's not a workplace it's not an office it's emotional and maybe inconceivable for other people to think that have never been there that you could just brush it off you can just let it go um Bradshaw who's a assistant coach in Philadelphia we were teammates in Hartford and we had a you know, we had a really good relationship. And one day at practice, we're doing the penalty killing power play. And he, I don't know, he cross-checked me. I slashed him, something like Anyway, the, one of the worst scuffles in hockey history ensued. So I come home after practice, and my wife says, uh, yeah, the Shaws are coming over for dinner tonight. I'm like, oh, I just fought Brad at practice. <laughs> and she's like, well, should I cancel? I mean, ah, it's fine. Right? Like, it, it, it honestly, it, 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 A, it doesn't matter. B, in some cases, guys are not the best of friends anyway. Like, mm. are you, if you're in a room of 25 people, are you best friends with all of them? You're mm. not. Mm. And so, you know, Tort said that he loves Sealer. Maybe Marchand and, and Montgomery have a great relationship. Maybe, you know, maybe there's a burr in there somewhere. Maybe Pedersen and Miller, there's a burr in there somewhere. It doesn't matter. It, it, it matters in the moment, and then you just let it go and, I can tell you, I almost with certainty, they have not thought about it anywhere as much as anybody else has. Is it a bigger story because of what Pedersen is going through, not only at the start of the season, but going back to last season, Ray? In, in what regard? Well, like, what, is it a bigger the, story? Like, like I, don't, I don't know. I mean, like, if everybody should be worried about themselves. Like, hmm. you know, like, everybody should be worried about themselves. You can be frustrated with a teammate or whatever, but it's not like you're going to teach them a lesson. Like, you know, like if that's what you mean, I, I don't know. It's not a, to me, it's not a bigger story other than they got pissed off at each other and started slashing and cross-checking each other. And then it's over. Yeah. 
But you, you say it's not like a regular workplace, but maybe it is like a regular workplace in that, you know, dolly wall wears on me. <laughs> same, same, same with uh, Ryan. Oh, yeah. that things, this, things like that. Are, we, we've had our blogs before. Yeah. Things yeah, like that are going to happen. Yeah, but it's not on camera. Yeah. It's not on camera. Yeah, so we wouldn't right. know. Yeah. You know, like, like honestly, I, I, I've been in a meeting in a coach's office that has not gone very well. And the coach has given it to me. I'm, I'm fed up with whatever is going on. My probably my lack of good play, and I'm fed up with the coach giving me crap all the time. So I give it back to him. He gives it back to me. Then the meeting's over, and then I leave. But nobody saw it. These are these become public things because Sealer and Tortorella were on the bench. Marchand and Montgomery were on the bench. Pedersen and Miller were at practice, and you could say, "Hey, why don't you take that behind closed doors?" But it, it doesn't work that way. Like uh, emotions are what they are, and it's like um, steam gets blown off, and then it's done. Ray, uh, speaking of emotions, I love this uh, acquisition by the Canucks, uh, Kiefer Sherwood. He leads the NHL in hits. I think he's got 31 hits in his last three games, Ray. He brings, he's got decent hands. He, he, he brings yeah. the speed. He, he disrupts uh, the other team. He's hard to play against. This guy's uh, turning out to be one heck of a signing so far for the Canucks, Ray. Well, we got a good look at him in the playoffs last year. Yeah. Right? Yep. And, and it was the same thing. Like, he was... You know, he's not going to get 32 goals for you, but his energy, his tenacity, his his want to play physically, like, you can't... It's funny, you'd like guys to... Everybody, let's finish our checks, and yeah. some guys do, and some guys don't. And for him, it's just part of him, right? Like, it's just part of the way he plays the game. I hated playing against guys like this. The real tough guys, they didn't bug me too much because... While I was terrified of them, they weren't going to ever fight me. Like, what were they going to do? Like, why would they fight me? The guys that were racing around like Sherwood, finishing their checks all the time, they're so hard to play against. And I'm looking at his hit totals, and <laughs> I went years with not that many hits. Right? Like, in the last six games. What's he got, 44 hits on the season? Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I'm like, that, like, the toll on your body mm. is is really significant and there's probably going to be times in the year where he's going to have to back off of that and not quite finish so much and just get into position and play a little more with your stick but man when he gets moving he is his goal is to separate puck and body it's uh, uh he's been a really really good signing for them really good Ray, we, we just talked to a kid from the Vancouver Giants, Cameron Schmidt, leads the Western Hockey League in goals yep. and points, and he was listed uh, by the scouts as a B listing, which means round two or three. A lot of people thought, hey, first round, maybe. He's 5'7". Um, is, that, is that the reason why he's in the B listing? I mean... It, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, without knowing the draft, yeah, you know, like and knowing all the kids, yeah. yeah, of course. I mean, like... I, I understand there's this opening in the game now, the way the rules are, the way the, uh, the games are, are actually played, that for much smaller players. And much smaller players can make a difference in the game they couldn't 15 or 20 years ago. You just, right. you just couldn't. I mean, it was a rarity for a small guy to, to have an impact. Um, so as good as a player is, if they're undersized, there will always be questions because there's going to be a point in the draft. I'm going to pick a hypothetical number here because I have no idea. Say you get to 25 in the draft mm. or 28, and you've got a player that's five foot seven and a player that's six mm. one, and they're relatively similar. And you know, maybe the five seven guy's a little more offensively gifted. Maybe the six one guy is a you know it's clearly is a little stronger you have to decide at that point what are you going to do with your pick like what do you believe wins what do you believe carries you forward you need goals you cannot win without them and that might be stupid to say but i've done games this year where the coaches already philadelphia uh, and washington in particular all year, all off season they tried to add offense right and a smaller guy might bring you offense that somebody else might not have. But then you look at the Stanley Cup winners, 
not many small guys out there. Like there's, you, you can have a couple, you can't have a bunch. And, um, you know, there's, you, you know, I mean, Lane Hudson's in Montreal and man, that's that kid fun to watch, but you can't have three of them on the blue line. Like you right. could, you could have one, even if he's exceptional. Could you have, could you have three defensemen Quinn Hughes's size? No. Well, if they're Quinn Hughes, you can. Mm. Right? But so you have to say, like, what am I giving up with the smaller player? And and you know what? For for him, you know, as he's in his draft year, he's best to never worry about that because yeah. guess what? He's small and he's gonna be small. Unless he's gonna have a seven inch growth spurt, he's just gonna be small. And you just you put that thing on your shoulder and it's one more piece of fuel. Yeah. And you know, like I was, I was always small. And every time I got knocked over, I knew it. They were, you know, on our bench, they're like, yeah, he lost another battle. When a big guy loses a battle, he just lost the battle. I lost it because I was small. Hmm. And I, for me, it was like, it, it made me hyper aggressive and hyper competitive to, to try and overcome what was clearly an obvious shortfall. Yeah. Hey, Ray, I saw this uh, on Twitter this week. Real interesting uh, conversation with you and uh, other people uh, on, on Twitter. But with Oliver Ekman Larson's reverse hit in mm-hmm. mind uh, the other day, and he got he got fined for it. What's your take on, on reverse hits? Are How dangerous are they, and should they be penalized? Um, they can be really dangerous, A. B, by definition, they're a penalty every time. Because the guy that's doing the hitting has the puck. The other guy does not have the puck. How can he be okay to be hit? The difference is, I'm not talking about when you brace yourself. When a guy's coming to hit you, and like you, you dig in and you lean into him, and he bounces off you. That's fine. Like that's, you're allowed to brace yourself. You don't have to stand there like a pinata and let yourself get hit. But when somebody's coming to hit you, and you launch yourself in the other direction as in a reverse hit, how could that not be a penalty? If, if that's not a penalty, what's stopping Kiefer Sherwood from just skating around the ice and hitting anybody he wants? It's the same thing. Nobody's got the puck. It's interference. And I, 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 don't, get where, I don't get where it's, been, it's become okay it, because it's become more egregious. Um, if you want to see, if you want to see uh, a great example of it, just uh, YouTube Peter Forsberg reverse hits, and I'm I'm right in the middle of it. First time I ever saw a reverse hit, I was on my ass when he hit me. I was like, "What just happened?" I'd never seen it before, and um, you know Peter was great at it. But in, in now, I don't know about the five thousand dollar fine or anything like that, but it's a penalty. Mm-hmm. The other guy doesn't have the puck; he's never touched the puck. How could how could he be eligible to be hit? Uh, uh, before we let you go, I have to say that when it comes to reverse hits, I'm just looking back at you know, stuff on YouTube. Gordy Howe, Mike. I, maybe it was just because it was Gordy Howe. People bounced off him no matter what. But he he was ahead of his oh, time. Okay, but here's the thing: when I played, I felt there was no rules. Right? Like, look at some of the games from back then. You're like, there's eight penalties a shift. Mm-hmm. If you go back 30 years in front of me, there, there, I mean, the rule book was a two-sided piece of paper. Like there was, don't do this, don't do this, this is fine, that's it. There are the rules. And, you know, I mean, they could do anything they wanted back then. <laughs> All right, Ray, thanks for this. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you next week. Safe tra- where are you, yeah, you traveling okay. to? Where are you traveling to? Uh, I'm going to Tampa, actually. Well, I got the Canucks game to, on Saturday, okay. which I'm okay. excited yeah. for. Yeah. My first Hockey Night in Canada game. And, nice. uh, um, and so then Sunday, I fly to Tampa. For Monday, Stamkos has returned to Tampa. Oh, my God. So oh. yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. I, I do have to say, Dolly, I, you know, you told me you'd wear the Hawaiian shirt. Hey, no, no. Wear it that, no, 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 no. Don't give me this. No, 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 no. What? It's the end of the month. You haven't done it. It's a beautiful day. You're wearing a gray shirt. Get with it, kid. No, no. Next Thursday is the thirty first. I got it done. It's Halloween. You can dress up. I no Ray. I, I got it we marked always, down. I, I'm uh, or- okay. So we got a chance. We got yeah, a chance. Yeah, it, it, I've ordered it. It's coming. It's coming in the mail. Oh, it's uh, it's in the it. mail. It's a, it. well it's a doozy. It's a doozy. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> it's in the mail. Thanks, Ray. <laughs>
<laughs> okay. Thanks. See you later, guys. Have a great day. Safe, safe travels.